I'm Sheila. Hello, I'm Jonathan. Welcome, Welcome to, to Boss Spindles. Spindles. Today, we're going to talk to you about the happy tools that we make for spinners around the world. We make spindles, we make charkas in two sizes, we make shuttles, we make nitty knotties. And a little, little bit later on, Jonathan will tell you about a regular style spinning wheel inspired by the charka. Spinners all around the world know us and we attend several shows in the US and we've done several online things, including other events for Camp Yarnsey. It's been a lot of fun. So we're glad to have you here with us. And now I'm gonna ask Jonathan to talk to you about charka. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, a charka is a, there are two kinds of spinning wheels. Point, spindles with wheels with a spindle on the point and a flyer. Here we're talking about spinning wheels with a point. Now, the Indian charka, as is usually seen, is a rather large, uh, not very portable thing. And when Gandhi was trying to bring the, the textile industry back to India, he had two contests. One, to see if someone can make a charka that was three or five times faster than the traditional charka. No one could figure that one out. But then he had a second contest where there was a winner where he said, can you make a portable charka? And the answer was, yes, you can make a more portable charka. And what the clever person did was he took this charka with a big, large wheel and a spindle, and he made it into, he took those parts and he put it in a box. So there are six different sizes of these spindles, at least. The little one, which is the book size, like a dictionary for those who remember dictionaries. And the attaché size, attaché size. This is the biggest of the family. We make both of these. This one, the attaché one, I believe was the first one of the series. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's look at the little one for now. So what we have done with the Indian one is we have made it more user friendly. So when one wants to spin with this variant of the book charka, one just puts a secondary belt on, takes the spindle from a lazy cake that's built in, and insert it into a bearing mount, which has a, a bearing a magnet, which holds it in place. And you are then ready to spin. Nothing to adjust. There's no oiling ever needed. But so one can take this wheel, and, I'm, and, and just spin right away without any setup or organizing of, of parts. I'm doing this sitting down next to it, which is, which is a little awkward, but what's the way we're doing for the show? It's really, I think of it as two parts. You're drawing out the sliver to a very fine roving with no strength to speak of. Then we add some twist to give it strength and then stop and wind it on. This is true of all spindle wheels. Now spindle wheels are mainly for fine diameter yarns. I happen to be using cotton, which is what Gandhi was in common in India, but it doesn't have to be cotton. It could be any, any fiber where you're asking for a fine fiber, which has high twist. The smaller the fiber, of course, the more twists per inch one has. Now I'm drawing this out and I'm adding with this cotton another 200 twists to give it strength before I wind it on. Now that's a lot of treadling if you're doing that on a traditional Western treadle wheel. So the point wheel has the advantage of it, can have the advantage of its a high ratio, which one needs for spinning a fine yarn. Now this wheel, one of the things that they did, Gandhi did, or the inventor did, he put an accelerator wheel in here. So this wheel turns this wheel faster and this wheel turns the spindle even faster, so it's accelerated. So when this wheel goes around one time, this goes around 70 times. The big attaché charter one, it's 110 to one, which someone quotes Gandhi as saying is a, is, a, is a prime ratio one should have for a spinning wheel. So what we have, what we have done, we have taken the 
theirs, which is fine for the material and the background they have, and we made it more user friendly. We made it, so we have in within it a lazy, a functioning lazy case, so one could ply up from it or wind off on a skein winder. And we've also made it safe in another way. We've made the spindle point round instead of needle sharp, which is the tradition. So it's safer there. And also, we feel that when the yarn snaps across the point every time the spindle turns, if it's a round point, we don't have a sharp point, which is weakening the fiber at that point. So we have done that. And also, we have moved the, the traditional Indian one, the spindle is. This bearing mount, as they have it, is on this side of the box, so the spindle sticks out, which it has one disadvantage and that it's dangerous because it's sticking out when you're not using it. We've moved it inboard, so the spindle is within the box. We have also kept the tradition that the spindle points down so that it makes it easier when you're, you have to have some angle Traditionally, people say 45 degrees from the fiber to the point. If you're straight ahead, it just unwinds. So you have to have some angle. But if the point is angle is already down, you don't have to lift your arms up so high. So it's more friendly to the shoulder with the spindle being down already. So these, this is what we've done to make this the spindle, the charka more user friendly. Also with the little one, we have a lever which you can swing over like this, and then you can sit it on your lap and you can have a laptop spinning wheel. You can spin with just a spinning wheel in your lap for lack of, if you have short of space. But now there's one feature here that we I will show you on the bigger wheel in that there's a, a built-in lazy cape and a skein winder. Now the bigger wheels That one's ready to be put away. I'll just set it here for the moment. The attache size and the other wheels are all about this long. Some of them are narrower. Some have two boxes like this one does. Some have one box, and some have no boxes. But let me, what I was wanted to show you was with this wheel, I'm gonna leave that down. The skein winder, they all have skein winders. And this one here, it's easy to demonstrate because I, it's just two pieces which fit on the accelerator wheel. On this one here, obviously this does, this arm doesn't fit in this box. So we, so in this one, there's a little, there's a hub and four arms which have to be assembled. But I will demonstrate skein winding with this one. First, we'll take a spindle out. Have some yarn on it. Put it in the in the functioning lazy cape. They all have a post in them for, for guiding the height of what you're going to uh, for the weave spinning it on. Now we attach the yarn to this to one of the arms there. Put it through the hook, and then we can just simply from the build-in skein build-in lazy cape wind off onto a skein winder, which is, they all have this, ours has it too, but this is what we have for a skein winder. Now one can, of course, set this aside for later. One doesn't have to wind it, but then one has a, a skein. So we will, this is all that. Well, that shows that this skein, the lazy cake we use for skein, one can also apply from this, from two spindles onto a third spindle here. We won't show that for now, but it, it, it can be done and it works very well. So we will say that that is a demonstration for the skein winder. It's easier this one. This is the first of the series. This, this is what I learned to spin on, not this very one, but one of this size. We was made in 1957. My father who was also a woodworker and spinner. He didn't spin, he wove, which reminds me. People out there in the world said, can you make a shuttle that holds the spindle from your charka? 
and I took his his shuttle, a 19th century boat shuttle shape, and re redid the pocket so one can spin directly a weft using the, the, the spindle from the wheel. So this is, we sell this as an accessory, but a lot of people have found it very useful for, because it can also be used for just the pin that holds it, a pin can be put in here for just a, a four inch bobbin, and you have a, a shuttle. So, so some weavers, other than our Chaka users, buy these shuttles, and we make these in a variety of woods. The Chakas are all in cherry, but our, our shuttles and our drop spindles are made from a variety of woods. So, which he also did, a variety of woods. So, I learned to spin on one of these in 1957, and then it sat, the idea sat quiet for a number of years while I raised a couple of children and didn't have a, then when, in, in 1976, I took the idea of putting a spinning wheel in a box, and I took oops, the idea of a tra traditional, a traditional flyer style, style spinning wheel, and put in it a box. This was our first product. This became known as the journey wheel. We, I've taken the idea of a folding, folding spinning wheel. And here we have it. We have the, the treadle and treadle base, which folds down. This is really the first folding treadle base in a portable wheel. We have a treadle. We have the main wheel, like the charka. We have an accelerator wheel, because the main wheel, of course, is smaller than a traditional treadle wheel. So we have the main wheel, an accelerator wheel, and a flyer. So we have taken the idea of the charka and built it into a box. We still make these on occasion, but mainly we do charkas and drop spindles now. But this, this is what started this going was, can you take Gandhi's idea one step further and put a Western style spinning wheel in a box? And we successfully did that. And, and it is like the charka in that you don't have to take anything apart to move, to move it away. You just fold it up like your tent and go away. Now, you'll see that basically it isn't that much bigger than the attache charka. It's just thicker. So we have taken. This was our first product. We're very proud of it. It's had a good reception over the years. But anyhow, that's where we are. We also make other things. And but now I will invite Sheila back to do her her talk. So we will clear the decks here so she can take her treasures. I'll take that if you like. Thanks, Jonathan. I just want to remind everybody that we have a Charka video and chat session on Saturday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time here on Yarnsey. We have a video about the background of the Charka and how to spin on it. It's a little more detailed than what you just did with Jonathan. Please join us. It's a free session Saturday at 5 p.m. on Yarnsey.com. So I'm going to talk about spindles. I do almost all of my spinning on spindles, and I really enjoy them. So I want to tell you a little bit about our spindles. I'm going to talk about the diameters and then regular versus skinny and then standard versus premium. So these are the three sizes of spindles that we make. Um, the big one is a three inch diameter with um, a 10 and a half inch shaft. The me medium one is a two and a half inch diameter with a nine inch shaft. And the little one is a two inch diameter with a nine inch shaft. These two have the same length. The maxi shaft is bigger. So these are sort of like mama bear, papa bear, and baby bear. And the names that I gave them when I was trying to think up how to describe them were maxi, midi, and mini. So those are the three sizes, three inch, two and a half inch, two inch diameter. We also have different thicknesses or 
thinnesses, if you like that word better, for the whorls. This one is our regular thickness. And if you look at this one, you see that it's a little bit thinner. We call these skinny versions of these. So these are two maxis, regular maxi in my right hand, beautiful tiger maple, and a skinny maxi in my left hand, which is beautiful black palm. I love the speckles on it, it's really great. So those are the maxis. We do the same thing with the middies. Here is a regular ash midi, regular thickness ash midi. And here is um, a Picasso Artwood skinny midi. You can see that one is thinner than the other, one is thicker, okay? So regular midi, skinny midi. Oh, well, here's the mini all by itself, it seems. Maybe there doesn't have any friends. Ah, here's a thinner one. We call these the thinner ones featherweights because we try to get the lightest weight possible with the widest variety of woods. So we have thick and thin, thick and thin, thick and thin in big, medium, and small. So another thing that we do uh, with our woods is we divide them into regular woods or premium woods. Regular woods are the woods that we can easily access from wood dealers that we visit regularly. So that would be things like ash, cherry, walnut, zebra wood, bacote, red heart, canary wood, wangi, and probably a few more that I just can't think of right off the top of my head. Those are woods that we can get almost, and we can get access to almost all the time. Other woods that are harder for us to find and more expensive for us to purchase are considered premium woods and they come with a slightly higher price tag. Uh, some spindles on display here in premium category would be Ambrosia Maple, uh, Flame Box Elder. That's another favorite. People like this because of the red. Uh, Buckeye Burl, another favorite of customers. They especially like the speckly colors and markings on these. These are particularly light in weight. Tulip wood, which is in the rosewood family, the Dalbergia family. These are beautiful woods and you see they take a really great sheen. You can see the stripes on the bottom. That's really great. Other premium woods um, include pink ivory, which is a wood. It's not ivory. It's pink ivory. It's from Africa. And this has a lovely tulip wood shaft. Now we divide the standard woods into two categories, those with standard birch shafts, or in the case of the maxi, orford cedar. We use orford cedar because it's used to make arrow shafts, so we know it's straight, it's very straight. Um, and then if you have a hardwood shaft like this red cedar mini has a cherry shaft, that's a little bit more expensive, but it's not in the premium category. Here's another one, canary wood. I love this because it looks like it's on fire. Isn't that great? And it has a tulip wood shaft. You can see the stripes on the tulip wood. So the, that's the different categories of spindles that we have. I guess the premium of the premiums would be these, our moosey spindles made from moose antler. And I love the look of these. Look at the modeling around here. Isn't that lovely? These are the natural colors of the moose antler. And we don't go out to hunt them. They shed their antlers every year. And we have an artisan colleague in Northern Maine who goes to the moose yard. That's the moose hangout place after they've shed their antlers and brings them in. We get our antlers from him. Sometimes they're very even and very smooth like this one. Sometimes they have, where did it go? Here it is, a little, a little spot on it that looks like somebody has gone nibbling, nibbling on the antler. Um, little woodland creatures do that because they can't go to the pharmacy to get their um, calcium pills. So they get their calcium from this. If it's a very dark spot, it's called bark because it's the outside edge of the antler, just like a tree. Okay, so you've spun up your yarn and now you wanna do something with it. So the first thing you might do is wind it off your spindle onto a ball winder or a nostopinna 
or even just a toilet paper core. And now I have to remember which way to do this. There we go. I'm making a little, little thing here so I can wind this on. We have a tool called a Nidi Naughty, N-I-D-D-Y, N-O-D-D-Y. It comes apart and you can put it together so it looks like this. I'll take it apart once more. Apart, fits perfectly in a Ziploc bag for travel. Put it in, put the other end in and twist firmly, but gently, so that they're perpen um, yeah, perpendicular to each other, so at right angles to each other. You notice the top arm has two upward swirls and you notice the formerly bottom arm has one upward and one slanting down. That's so when you're done, you can slide your skein off. So I'm gonna hook this over the swooping arm, and then I'm going to hold the nitty knotty, and I'm going to wrap my yarn that I just finished the other night around all four points there. That's one yard of yarn. Here's two yards and three and four, and here comes five. So now I've got five yards of yarn on my Nitty Naughty. It um, will hold easily a small skein, a swatch skein, say 10 to 15 yards. It'll hold 50 yards easily. And here's a full one that I did two days ago with 172 yards on it of two-ply yarn. So the nice thing about the Nitty Naughty is that when you're traveling, if you have your yarn on it, you can simply flatten it out. Okay, to use it, the arms must be perpendicular. To travel with it without taking your skein off, just flatten it by turning like this. Okay, so let me mention now that we have a concierge shopping date on Friday, tomorrow at 7 p.m., Bosworth Spindles. And tomorrow at the concierge shopping, we're offering free shipping within the US on any purchase of $125 or more, not including charters. So I'm going to ask Jonathan to come back now and we'll talk a little bit about burls, bugs, and brew. We have just a few minutes left with you and I want to give him the opportunity to talk about this. Okay, Jonathan, well, welcome back. A short course on wood. One thing we, we want to mention is that woods generally are not even across their diameter. They're what scientists would say anisotropic. In other words, the quality, the density of the wood varies around the piece of wood. So what we have done is we have found, made a device that I use that allows me to add a weight, a little brass pin in this case, on the light side of the spindle so that every spindle we make is perfectly balanced so that it rotates right on the shaft. Just as if when you buy a new tire for your car, you have that wheel balanced so it runs true and goes, it doesn't go company company. We balance the whirl so it doesn't go wobbly wobbly when you spin on it because each one is individually balanced by adding a weight to or the two. side or a weight of, yes, a weight or two, more than one, one or more little brass plugs on the side of the wood where the density is lower. So this is one thing we're very proud to have accomplished to make the spindle perfectly balanced so that it rotates right directly on the shaft. But now what Sheila is talking about is uh, bugs. Pearls. Bugs, burls, and brew. We make a, <laughs> one of the spindles we make. Brew, get into that. <laughs> brew got into this because we make a spindle using white ash, white oak whiskey barrels. Charred oak whiskey Char barrels. And whiskey barrels, to be a whiskey barrel, has to have the inside charred so that it's black. So that it has a charcoal which affects the quality of the spirits. And so we take those barrel staves, you can only use it once by some strange law, I guess put in by the oak people. And we take those staves and we make spindle whirls out of them. We don't have, you don't have- I don't any, have a moonshine here, but that's we call what we them. Call them. We have moonshine, so that's the brew part. The bugs is that we're not, when, in many cases, we're not the first person 
to use this piece of wood. So in ambrosia? The, and on the ambrosia maple, for example, the ambrosia beetle, it bores through the wood and behind its trail where it has passed, the, the, the maple changes the light, the light swamp maple changes color to a brown. If it's a box elder tree, which is related to maple, yes. you have a, a box elder that's, that's, that's flame, but this stripe that is left behind from the enzymes of the ambrosia beetle turn the wood red. So it looks like flame. So that's called flame box elder or maple is ambrosia maple. So that's the bugs. How about now, the burls? The bur a, burl, a burl is a, an unusual growth on a tree. It, where the wood for, for some reason or other didn't grow just straight like a tree trunk. It grows in a bump, a, a cancerous bump, if you will, on the side of the tree. And in that case, the wood has very strange and wonderful wiggly grain patterns. Or speckles. And sometimes um, a mold will come along and speckle the wood and we have um, the bugs again. <laughs> Yes, so um, we don't give you spindles with any bugs in them. We, the, bu we, <laughs> the, bugs, the, bugs, the bugs have been there. Spalted is the word I was trying to You have spalted wood, the wood becomes colored. Each various fungi that it is, likes the wood will change the wood a different color. So you can have a piece of wood with a fine black stripe right next to a white area and a brown stripe. So you have various patterns in the wood where these creatures have used the wood before we, before we got it to change it into a beautiful drop spindle for your use. I, I just want to say that if you're interested in the history of the woods we use for our historical spindles, or to hear more about burls, bugs, and brew, you could join us on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock Eastern time here on yarnsey.com for our talk about woods with a story. So Jonathan, I think we're almost out of time. Yes. Yeah. So I just want to mention there's one last opportunity for yarns giving shopping, and that will be on Sunday. I think that's in the afternoon at three o'clock, but I don't have that schedule in front of me. In that, in that session, we're going to give away a free spindle in our Sunday meeting. So send us an email with yarns giving drawing as your subject line. We have to receive your entry by 12 noon on November 28th. That's Sunday the 28th, 12 noon. Send it. You might be the winner. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time, right. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to say I'm Sheila. I'm Jonathan. Thank, Thank you, you for, for visiting, visiting with us. us.